Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the second session on today's channel, uh, which is our merchant stage. Uh, we had a great, interesting session uh, with eBay earlier on from looking about coupons and the new coupons and things going forward. And um, yeah, my name is Matt Hammond from Emotive. Uh, we're part of the Ecom Motors and really happy to be uh, supporting and presenting today and looking at how we can help and provide valuable insight and knowledge uh, to sellers out there and help them grow. Uh, for this session, uh, yeah, exciting session that we have with WISH, uh, with Alan Small, who is the Head of Business Development for Europe. Um, so Alan has over nine years of experience in e-commerce, having launched his own online stores and a leading EU marketplace for students. Uh, he joined WISH in July 2020 to head up the business development team and responsible for the growth and success of the European merchants on WISH. So today, as we go through this session, feel free to submit questions. You know, Alan will be taking questions uh, via the totem, uh, submit a question button, um, and we'll do our best to be able to answer those questions as we go through. And we'll have a Q&A session at the end where you'll be able to ask more questions about how we can grow our businesses with Wish.com. So Alan, good morning and, uh, and welcome to the stage. Morning, Matt. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to be here and I'm very excited to be able to discuss a bit more about Wish um, and what Wish can do for you uh, for any e-commerce sellers in the UK or Europe. Fantastic. Yeah, certainly looking forward to it. You know, I guess, you know, for a lot of people who are new into marketplaces, they're probably looking at things like eBay or Amazon, which are heard of. But actually, there's some awesome, great other marketplaces out there. Um, and Wish is one of those. So really looking forward to how merchants can take advantage of Wish and, and hearing from you about how best to do that today. Great. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I'm happy. Um, you're happy to explain everything. And um, yeah, hopefully at the end of this session, if anyone uh, wants to find out a bit more and wants to start giving Wish a trial, we're, we're available to help support on that. And we'll have a booth set up as well to answer any further questions. Fantastic. So I'll hand it over to you and um, certainly I'll maybe jump in and dive in if there's some questions that come through and uh, anything that we need a bit more clarification. So um, love to hear how we're going to unlock our global e-commerce potential with Wish. <laughs> Thanks so much, Matt. Great. So um, cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, just a, a, a brief introduction again, like as Matt said. So yeah, I'm Alan Small. I'm the head of the business development for Wish in Europe. Um, and yeah, my responsibility is the growth and success of our European merchants. Um, I look after a team of account managers across Europe. Um, we've got a team in the UK, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Germany, Netherlands, France, the Nordics, um, and other emerging markets such as Turkey and Czech Republic. Um, and uh, yeah, as Matt said, before joining Wish, well, I'm a management consultant by trade, um, but I, I went on to go launch my own marketplace in the UK. And I've been on the I've been an e-commerce seller across various marketplaces for about 10 years or so now. So I know what it's like to be on um, both sides. Um, and there's lots of things you might not know about Wish, or you might have some assumptions. Uh, for example, you might think it's just for Chinese sellers, or you might think it's just for unbranded products, which isn't true. And I'm here today to explain a bit more about that. So I'm excited to talk to you today about Wish and why it is a must have marketplace for any UK or European seller. And uh, during today's sessions, I'll cover a bit about um, bit more about Wish, um, some high level numbers you might not be aware of about Wish. Um, what makes Wish unique compared to any other marketplace? Um, then what sells on Wish? Um, and then how to start selling on Wish and being a success. And then I'll wrap up with a, an exclusive offer we have for any merchant in the UK or Europe who wants to come on board and start selling on Wish. But, um, as Matt said, I'll pause after each of those sections, just because a lot, I know a lot of the things I'll be discussing on Wish might be quite new. So I'll pause at the end of each section just to answer any questions you might have. But I will also have that time at the end of the session as well. So yeah, so going on to a bit more about Wish then. So um, Wish is a 10-year-old US company. We're headquartered in San Francisco with offices across the US, Canada, Europe, and APAC. And Wish's mission is, well, Wish is the leading mobile commerce platform in the US and Europe with a mission to bring affordable and entertaining shopping experience to billions of consumers around the world. We're one of the most and best reviewed apps out there with more downloads than any other app. We are rated more highly by consumers than the likes of eBay, AliExpress and Amazon. 
We've also been the most downloaded shopping app globally for three out of the last four years. So it kind of gives you an idea of the sort of scale of Wish, considering we're only 10 years old or how quickly and rapidly we've been expanding uh, and still expanding across that globally. Um, and then here's a bit more information about selling on Wish and some like high level stats to give, to give you an idea of that sort of size. So when you join Wish, you'll be entering a community of hundreds of thousands of merchants worldwide across more than 100 countries with more than 150 million items available for sale. We have over half a million sellers globally and more than 1.8 million transactions go through each day. Um, I just want to pause here because the majority, I just want to highlight something. The majority of our sellers are traditionally Chinese sellers uh, selling internationally. But I, our focus in the UK um, and Europe is to, um, we, is to onboard local sellers. And we have a special program in place, which not only levels that playing field for you, um, but also enable you to reach 100 million monthly active users with very little local competition as well. But I'll explain a bit more about how that program works throughout this session as well. In terms of our global customer base, so this map just highlights globally where Wish is that it's strongest. So our biggest markets are by far United States and Europe, but we also have a strong and growing presence in LATAM and the APAC region. More relevant, obviously, for this discussion um, is uh, Western Europe. So here's a map of, um, so we're present in every European country, but our, our most popular countries would be the UK, France, Germany, and Italy followed closely by the likes of the Netherlands, Spain, the Nordics. But as I mentioned, we have a presence in um, every European country and we have local account managers in each of those countries to help support you in your local language, local time zones, and also just understanding the local market for you as well. In terms of um, a bit more just about our customer demographics, um, so here you can see um, just a highlight of that. I kind of mentioned the, the areas on the previous ones about the maps, but um, most of our customers are using Wish on an Android device and purchasing on a mobile app. Uh, data shows we have slightly more females than male users, and our demographic is generally younger, um, under 38, 30 years old, so that millennial sort of target market, which I know a lot of e-commerce businesses are really trying to get to, which is really like Wish's sweet spot, those millennials. We really know how to work with them, what they want to see, how to keep them engaged on the platform, um, which to be fair, it works out that um, on average, our average user spends 10 minutes per day browsing the app, which is quite a long time considering uh, the, the amount of competition there is out there on e-commerce. So that's kind of just a very briefly at high level, just about a bit more about Wish uh, and a bit of stats about Wish as well. I'm going to pause there just in case there are any questions that there might not be, just because I know I haven't really covered anything. But um, yeah, um, any questions on the side, Matt? Yeah, so Alan, just, uh, just a quick one there. You talked a little bit about how there's a lot of Chinese sellers that are on there on the platform and there's a real focus on driving European sellers and leveling out the competition through this, you know, kind of, programs that you're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, I guess the other question around that is how, maybe you'll answer this further on, was the question was really around how does the VAT changes going to impact that and level that competition uh, once you know, th those changes taking to play, coming to place across Europe? Really good question. I've, I feel like I've been living in the VAT world recently because uh, everyone knows about the new changes that came into place in the UK and also in Europe. Um, this would even help, this will level that playing field even further. So Wish has a, a, our own built-in tax engine, which you can use uh, in Wish. And what that means is basically, you, uh, if you're a European seller, um, you apply for those tax settings. Um, you just basically say, I'm a UK, a UK merchant or German or French. Um, and then it will just uh, help calculate those, those tax returns for you. Then it, ultimately you determine whether or not you would rather Wish handle your tax for you and pay it back to the local HMRC or the local governments. Or if you want to handle the tax yourself, you're able to handle that tax yourself. So that's kind of like how we have the Europe and the UK bucketed. And if you're a seller from outside of that, we're going to be automatically adding the, the local VAT onto every single product that comes into Wish. So if you sell into the UK, a Chinese seller, we'll be increasing your prices by 20%, um, which again, is going to help the UK and European sellers stand out even more because most of them already add their products on the marketplace be to be inclusive of VAT already. Um, so yeah, um, 
Uh, I don't have a section to dedicated about VAT, but I'm more than happy. We've got a whole, I've got a guide I can send to any merchant who wants to know a bit more about VAT. Um, because one of the strengths of Wish is that we are truly a global platform to sell cross borders. Um, and we've built a tax engine to make sure we were able to do that with ease. Great. And the, the other question that came in was you know, working on adding new sellers and focused on sellers within the European markets. Um, what are, the, are there programs that have been run? Uh, and you might be covering this later. Are there been programs you run about brand awareness and growing actually the consumers that shop on Wish as well? Yeah, I've got a section on that um, in the next uh, in the next part, which is what makes us unique. And um, I, I'll elaborate a bit more on what we're doing to grow that as well. Fantastic. Yep. Thank, awesome. Thanks for answering those. Yeah. No, no, no worries. Um, great. So yeah. Um, so then the next section um, I'll be discussing is what makes Wish unique. So as Matt said, there's so many marketplaces out there, um, but what Wish is truly unique. And there's many reasons I can go into this. Like I said, I'm a marketplace seller from experience, but the four key areas I wanted, I'm going to discuss a few now, which would, we found that our UK and European merchants are found to be like a huge differentiator for them against other marketplaces. And the first one I kind of touched upon a little bit earlier about saying how we're the most downloaded and most reviewed shopping app out there. Um, and that's, we are mobile focused. Um, we do have a web version. Um, not many people would know that, but not because 90% of all interactions, so 90% of those 1.8 million daily orders and our monthly active users, they go through via mobile devices. Um, so we built Wish to be mobile focused. A lot of other marketplaces uh, were traditionally websites and now they're converting more to, to be an app. Uh, whereas Wish, we've always just been an app. And we've been able to design the marketplace to be mobile first. So it's more of a picture-based exploration. So you're scrolling through. Um, there's a picture. There's a continuous scroll feed as well, as if you're kind of almost on a social media channel as well. Um, and then the other thing linked to being mobile-based is we're a mobile-focused, is we're a discovery-based platform. And what that means is... Um, uh, rather than being a traditional search base where you have to search in the exact keywords and if you don't type in the exact keywords that you're looking for or if someone or uh, you've misspelled something or uh, someone's bid on that keyword might not be the product you want um, that's traditionally how you would shop by the search platform um, but on wish we have the best of both worlds we do have the search capabilities so you can search for the products you're looking for but over 70 percent of all of our transactions um, go through without a search query uh, which is really unique. You wouldn't find this on other marketplaces. And this is all down to our unique algorithm, which I'll go into in the next section. Um, so what we do is we're able to do a lot of the heavy lifting for the customer, but also a lot of the heavy lifting for the merchant. So we match the right products to the right customers. And um, we do this by building a unique persona about each of our individual users, um, which leads me on to that second part. So um, our algorithm is very unique on Wish. So what we do um, once you first sign up to Wish, we take those, um, the demographics, uh, we take this user information we get from you from when you sign up. We then combine it with your usage history to build this persona. So we'll know your age, your demographic. Uh, we'll know like, what country you're in, what region you're in. We know your buying habits. We'll know your hobbies and your interests. We'll know what similar people buy as well for you as well. And we'll build, build this unique feed for you. So if every one of us on this uh, right now is to open up Wish and hold the phone next to each other, not one, not, not one of the feeds will be identical to the other. And we update this in real time. Um, and I've got an example here. So on this feed, if you, let's say you're shopping on the feed and you want to buy a massage gun, you'd click on that massage gun. Uh, you'll go to the product feed. You'll have a look at it. Um, then Wish is automatically picking up, okay, this user might be interested in a massage gun. When they go back to the feed, they'll show another couple of those massage guns. Uh, if they click on another one, which will then say, okay, right, there is a strong intent for them to buy this. So they'll start to show more products. So the more you use it, the more it will update with you in real time, which is why 70% of transactions take place without a search query. The third part is kind of linked to that question which Matt said about. So um, one of the reasons we've been able to grow so rapidly is dig we're digital marketing experts. So from the user acquisition, uh, we're one of the biggest advertisers globally on the likes of Facebook and Google. Um, we know how to target our audience. Um, Peter, our founder, actually is one of the original Google AdWords creators. So we really understand like, how a market works. Um, so we're able to target our customers with the right products they might be interested to get their attention. And the great thing is we can include your products on this as well um, to get free exposure to the millions of users we have. 
The second part is it's all great having those users, but you want to retain them. So we've got a very unique retention program. So we reward and we gamify the whole shopping experience uh, for our customers. So on a weekly, if not daily basis, you have the chance to get discounts with free items. And this comes out of Wish's pocket. So if you're a, a merchant selling a product for £20 and Wish offers a 10% discount, the customer will pay £18. You'd get your full £20 and Wish will absorb that cost. And the final part is that brand awareness. So um, again, we do uh, targeted marketing to ensure we reach our target audience. So in the US, we sponsor the likes of the Lakers. Uh, the UK, we've sponsored Leeds United. Um, and we have a strong T we have a new TV uh, ad campaign going out across Europe. So this is currently in the likes of Germany, France, and Italy, but it's going to be expanded into the likes of the UK. And this Matt, is kind of like uh, the part where we're going to be using this to communicate more to our users, um, the UK users, the European users about Wish and the types of products that you can actually buy on Wish, that you can buy branded products, that you can buy higher average order value products, and that you can buy products locally that can be delivered to you within five business days. Great, that brings leads into a question if I just drop mm -hmm. in there, which is Please, yeah. which really kind of from that last point you just made, which is what are the best product categories to sell on Wish? Um, so that kind of, uh, yeah, I guess ties into what you were just talking about. Yeah, it's okay. I've got a section on that as well, actually, Matt, if it's okay if I um, go over that in a bit more detail in, in one of the coming up sections. Fantastic. Perfect, great. Uh, it's great to hear these questions. It goes to show I've actually built a good deck to show you that it's going to answer those questions. So great, keep those coming. Um, the fourth part, um, which really makes Wish unique, and like I said, I'm a marketplace seller myself, um, and this is the one that really truly stands out for me, is Wish's global presence. So Wish is available in over 100 different countries, and we have over 100 million monthly active users. And this is a list of all of those countries. And the unique thing about Wish is you can sell to each one of those countries with just one feed. You don't need to create a new account for each additional country. You simply just create your account. Let's say you're a UK seller, you create your account, you can decide just to sell in the UK if you want, but then you might want to turn on France and Germany. You simply just go to your settings, turn on those countries, and your product would automatically go live to each one of those countries. The great thing then Wish does is we will handle that translation. So we'll translate the title of your product, we'll then translate your description, um, and then we'll also translate the reviews of those products as well. So you can just start selling localized in each one of these countries with a click of a button. You just state how much you want to charge for shipping to each of those countries, uh, and then Wish will do the rest. We'll also convert the currency. So if you are set up your account in GBP and you sell to Europe, We'll convert, the, we'll convert it to be so it appears as in euros in those European markets. And then when a transaction goes through, we'll convert it back to GBP. So you can manage everything through that one single account and sell to all of those different countries as well. Um, and what we'll do is we're there to help you throughout that whole process. So if you're a UK seller and you're, you want to kind of maybe trial a new European market or global market, we can help analyze that data for you and identify the markets where your products are in high demand. We don't have as much supply. So we can work with you to help you turn on those additional countries for you on, on your behalf. And that's a, a pause of that next section. So that's um, what truly makes Wish unique compared to any other marketplace. Um, are there any questions anyone has just about that section? Yeah, I guess in regards to your ability to sell in multiple markets and countries, um, what is Wish's distribution network like? Good question. So, um, so we have um, we have different ways. So, majority of our sellers fulfill themselves, fulfill the orders themselves. But we have integrations to all the major carriers across Europe. So, uh, like DPD, DHL, even localized ones for each countries. So, all you've got to do is um, you just. Uh, we've also got partnerships with them, so we can introduce you to try and get. Um, uh like favorable rates for you um so all you've got to do to fulfill an order is you select that carrier and you add the tracking id every order on wish needs to have a tracking id just so you know and then you just fulfill that order yourself if you want wish to fulfill it we do have a service called uh fulfillment by wish so you can use one of our warehouse in europe um, and we're about to open a new warehouse in the uk in q3 so you could send your products ahead to wish and then wish can fulfill those orders on your behalf for you as well Fantastic. And I think the other question that's come here relates exactly to about what you're going to talk about next, uh, which is about up, up, uploading products. And the question is, do you require EAN 
slash UPCs to be able to list on there. So I'm not sure if you're going to go through that or if that's specific, but the questions we seem to get is just about the next topic you're about to talk to. So I, I love it. I love it. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's, um, but yeah, I'll answer that quickly. Yes, um, it's not mandatory on Wish. So you can upload your GTINs, your EANs, or your UPCs, but it's not a mandatory process like it is on other marketplaces. We recommend it because we use it to help automatically tag your brands and automatically populate some elements. But no, it's not mandatory um, to upload. Great. Thanks, Alan. It's okay, great. Yeah, no, yeah, leading on to uploading products. So this next section is all about uploading those products. Um, and there are four ways um, to be able to upload your products. Um, and um, it couldn't be easier to list those products on Wish. Um, but we do have, but we're, and we're here to help you throughout that onboarding process. And I'm going to keep saying that throughout this session because it's, again, something truly unique about Wish, that service we offer as account managers to help you throughout each process. So once you've created your account on Wish, which takes literally 30 seconds, there are four different ways to list your products. You can manually add them one by one. You can do a CSV upload uh, by a temp using one of our templates. Uh, you can utilize our open API to build a direct integration. Um, if anyone is interested in going down that route, I can share the API guide offline and introduce you to our API team who can help you. And then finally, you can use one of our channel partners. And um, we have a direct integration with many of the leading integrators across Europe, US, and LATAM, including the likes of Limworks, Channel Advisor, Channel Engine, and Plenty Markets, all of whom are exhibiting at Tame Bay Live. Um, it's a little plug for them as well. Uh, we have several new ones as well about to go live in the coming months. Um, and adding your products via an integrator couldn't be easier. But again, we're here to help you through that process. Um, and finally, you can also list your products directly from the leading shopping platforms, including Shopify, Presser Shop, BigCommerce, and you can just use one of our module plug plugins. Um, again, if you would like to find out more about those integrations or those plugins, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, and if there's an integration that we don't isn't listed here or coming soon, I'll be I would love to discuss with you about that, and we can uh, look to I uh, can follow up with that as well. Um, I'll, I'll go on to the next section, Matt, if that's okay, just because um, it, it covers a bit more about uploading those products and the kind of the questions that came up earlier. Um, and that, that first part is about the, what sells well on Wish. So you've kind of, from this conversation so far, you've understood what's, what's good on Wish. Um, you've understood what's unique about Wish. Now you want to know what sells on Wish. So um, uh, the biggest selling category is fashion and fashion accessories. Um, I think that's common across most marketplaces, but it's followed closely by um, home decor, um, the likes of health, uh, health and wellness, toys and hobbies. Um, but one of the things I really want to like, um, I really want to highlight though, though, there's three categories I really want to like highlight, which have, we've seen a very, very strong growth on in Europe, which is consumer electronics, home and garden and CPG. Um, and in fact, our head of CPG, Heidi, is available this week. Um, so if anyone wants to reach out to find out a bit more about what we're doing, working with the likes of like Unilever and other products like that, um, feel free to reach out um, because, yes, yeah, it's a really strong growth category for us at the moment. The next one is branded products. So, again, a lot of people, uh, a lot of the big brands we speak to who are on board at the moment assumed that Wish wasn't for branded products, but that's, that's not true. Um, we actually have a dedicated brand section within the Wish app. Um, where uh, consumers can go to to browse particular brands or they can even shop categories within those brands. And we work with some of the leading brands globally. Um, uh, these are just an examples of some of the ones like Disney, Skullcandy, L'Oreal. Um, and the other thing we can do as well is if you are an authorized brand seller, so if you're either the brand owner or you're the distributed uh, authorized distributor of those brands, you can apply for brand authorization. It's this little green tick. Um, so once you provide evidence of that, will then approve that and each one of your products will have this green tick on it. So again, that helps your product stand out against any other product because they've been verified as the authentic brand. Um, and brands is one of our big pushes about the moment we're doing, which we're heavily promoting to our customers. And it's a huge demand for it because again, you can't buy branded products in China. So again, having localized branded like um, uh, items, is a huge uh, plus if you're selling on Wish. And then, um, so, okay, so I've kind of gone over now, um, like, I uh, kind of hopefully sold you a bit on Wish. Uh, you know how and how you can add products to Wish. You might know the categories now that sell on Wish. The next step is how to be a success on Wish. And as I've mentioned throughout this webinar, we are here to help you through this onboarding process. And we'll work closely with you to be a success. But here you'll find sort of like the eight top tips that I find for being a success on Wish. 
Um, and this is what our current Europeans have been able, this is how our current European merchants have been able to expand so rapidly in Europe. And I just want to like share some of those, those tips. So the first one is add SKUs. It sounds quite simple, but Wish's algorithm rewards users with more SKUs. So the more products you add, the more you get picked up by our algorithm. We generally find that if you add a minimum of 100 products, it maximizes your exposure on our algorithm. Um, not to say if you don't have less than 100 products, you, it wouldn't work for you. It definitely would. It's just uh, we can recognize as you're adding more products, our algorithm picks that up. The next one is uploading clear images and descriptions. So uh, products with the high resolution, like a really clear background or white background really convert best. And we've also found that you can also add in the product uh, in the, add in images of the product in use as some of the supplementary images also helps a lot. And also utilizing our, our video functionality. Again, if you're able to have videos of your product, upload them, really great at converting customers to start buying your products because they can see how to use it and actually it being used. And keep those descriptions really concise. Again, we really target those millennial users who are used to being more picture-based exploration. It's all about that sort of content. So really keeping that description concise and just the key inf information that you need to know. The next one is using our price drop functionality. So this helps capture those additional impressions uh, by you able to apply a temporary discount on your uh, all of your products or a range of your products. So you just select the products, the discount you want to do, either monetary value or percentage value, and then you and then the amount of days you want to do that. Those then products then are highlighted by Wish as a limited time promotion and really help your product stand out. Uh, the next one uh, kind of like links to the question Matt mentioned earlier is tag your authentic brands as well. So if you're a brand seller, um, you, there's a brand section when you upload a product. Um, and if you add your, if you tag your brand there, it then gets picked up on our brand section and then we'll pick it up to do additional uh, marketing for you on your behalf for free. Um, and if your brand isn't listed in our brand directory, you can request that and it will generally get approved within 24 to 48 hours. Um, but if, um, and um, yeah, if you do, again, UPC, G10 isn't mandatory, but if you did upload using that, it would automatically tag your brands for you on your behalf. So if you do have a UPC or G G10, I do advise you to do that. It just saves you that bit of hassle of tagging your brands. The next one is really unique. Uh, I've not seen this across other marketplaces, but we have something called Collection Boost. And the idea is, uh, let's if you've got a collection of products or a theme of products you really want to highlight to you, to the customers, you're able to build those custom collections. So let's say it could be a collection of um, baby toys or the theme could be back to school, for example. And then you can create that collection and add all of your products to that collection. You can create the custom image you want to go over the top of that uh, collection. And then also your, your company logo can appear on there as well. And then that will appear on the user feed. So a user, can be browsing through their feed and then they'll see a collection for back to school, let's say, and you click on that and it would only show your products. And you can also make sure that it ranks for key search terms. So if someone searched for the word school or school uniform or backpacks or et cetera, we can, you can then make sure your collection appears for those. Um, we can help you as well, create your first collection on your behalf as well and really guide you through that process. The next one is expanding with international shipping. Um, touched upon this earlier, Huge, huge, uh, big, big market we have on Wish and a huge potential to sell globally. 60% of all of the sales on Wish come from international buyers. So although you can be very successful selling domestically, as soon as you add one of our international markets, you can almost double, triple the reach you have and, and generally increase your impressions in your sales like overnight just by doing that. And we have that integrated system of carriers, the translations for you to help resolve any issues you might have or be worried about selling internationally. And then the next two, Product Boost and Wish Express. Um, these are two like, very important parts. And I've kind of actually got a bit of a dedicated slide about each one of these as well, because uh, just to highlight the importance of those. So um, Product Boost uh, provides, um, basically implies more impressions and faster sales by ranking your products higher in the customer feeds. So sellers see on average about 62% increase in impressions after implementing Product Boost. All you've got to do in the merchant dashboard is you just select the products that you want to boost. You set your daily budget that you want, and then you select the duration of your product. And then your products will appear as an ad at the top of the feed for the customers. And we'll make sure that the right customers see those ads for you. Uh, the next one, um, this is the one which I think is really makes you stand out um, is Wish Express. Uh, it's probably the most important in my eyes to really make you a success on Wish. 
um, and make you stand out. So Wish Express is the idea that if you're able to deliver your products within five business days to a particular country, then you can enroll in Wish Express. All you've got to do when you add your products is you add your uh, max delivery time to those countries. So let's say you're a UK seller, you might say uh, five days to the UK, uh, five days or six days, or let's say five days to France, to Germany, um, then Wish will automatically tag your products with this orange truck logo. Um, so when you're on the feed, you'll see this orange truck logo and you'd also have your, your flag next to it as well. So if you're a UK seller and you do Wish Express to the UK, your product will appear to UK sellers with this orange truck logo and a UK flag. That means a customer will be able to see, oh, okay, this is actually a UK seller. This is actually um, it's gonna get delivered to me within a couple of business days. Um, this is great. Um, and it's one of the most popular filters we have on Wish that a customer just clicks on for Wish Express just to see items they can get a lot faster. Because again, as I mentioned, traditionally we've had a lot of, a majority of our sellers traditionally have been Chinese sellers, generally take um, two weeks or so to deliver their products. So this helps you stand out ahead of any of the Chinese sellers because there's a huge demand to have these products faster. Um, and we generally see that once you enroll in Wish Express, you get three times as much exposure, you get paid faster. Um, and also we then do a lot of extra boosting and advertising for you. We always have banners about get your products within five days and we'll include your products on that as well. So that's a like very high level, um, how to be a success on Wish. And then, um, as I mentioned, the final part, which I want to discuss with you is what we can do for you. So kind of the theme I've been saying throughout this entire webinar is that we're there to help you through the entire process. And we really do mean that. We, I, I myself know the importance of having an account manager to help your accounts, to help your store grow. So what we can offer you, if you are to sign up in the UK or Europe, is your own dedicated account manager. That account manager will help onboard you. It'll help make sure you upload your products for one of those four different ways that I mentioned earlier. They'll help optimize your listings to make them stand out. Again, like I said, wishes you need to have a marketplaces and we can help optimize your listings to make sure they stand out. And then we can drive impressions to your products. What we can do is we'll include your products in our free boosting on a weekly, monthly basis as well to get you additional impressions for you on your behalf. This is completely for free and we'll just keep marketing and promoting your products to make sure your product appears at the top of the feed. It's the, one of the first products that maybe a customer in the UK or Europe sees. The next one is commission. So wish we don't have category specific commission. We just have a flat commission rate. Traditionally, if you were to go to wish right now today to sign up, you would get, it would be 15% commission. Um, I know that doesn't work across a lot of categories. So what we'll do is we'll reduce that commission to just 5% for the first three months of selling on Wish. And then after that three months, your account manager will work with you to come to a compromise on what a commission level is acceptable for you, depending on the products you sell in, sell and what countries you sell into. If you're selling to more countries and adding more of your products, we can be a lot more flexible with you on the commission as well. Um, number three, I kind of mentioned this already, but the free boosting, I just want to emphasize this, this is worth thousands like it's just free impressions and support that you wouldn't get necessarily on another marketplace so we'll keep boosting those products for you till you get picked up by that algorithm and that algorithm and get impressions and start to get sales and we'll continue to keep supporting you doing that the whole way and then there's those other marketing opportunities so we can include you in our banners so uh, an example banner here so we have um we we handle all of our own european banners and uk banners so we've got um, a brands one coming up this week we've got a home and garden one we can create a dedicated one for you as well and we can include your products in that brand in that banner which goes to all of our hundreds of millions of monthly active users and it was just your products or just a, or your products will be included in that banner we'll include you on our social media as well um so again like I mentioned, biggest advertisers, one of the biggest advertisers on Facebook and Google. We can include your products in that on our Facebook and Instagram ads and also on our Google shopping. Um, we can get your hands and we work with some of the biggest influencers across Europe um, and internationally. We can get your products into the hands of our influencers to get more um, impressions and get more um, uh, awareness of your products as well on Wish. And then the final part is just that wider support. So we are there to, again, to support you throughout the whole process, not just to get your first sales. If you have any issues with fulfilling orders or uh, shipping to other countries or expanding to new countries, we're there to support you the whole way. And we can help you jump on a call, guide you through it step by step um, and make sure that you truly are a success on Wish in Europe. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the pitch. Um, just want to thank everyone for your time. Um, really excited to... Uh, 
share the opportunity of Wish for you in the UK and Europe and happy to answer any questions you might have. Wow, that was really interesting. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> there was lots right. of stuff on there that I think a lot of people didn't know about. And it shows them also the questions that are coming through. So some of these you probably answered, so you might want to just go through very quickly, but I think it's worth throwing through these questions to you. Um, do you have a fulfillment center in the UK? Um, we, do, we are currently in the process of getting that set up. It should go live at the start of Q3 is our plan. Mm -hmm. Great. What are the re minimum requirements for becoming a seller on Wish? Good question. Um, so there's no upfront fees on Wish. So you don't have to pay to join Wish. The only time you ever pay on Wish is if you sell an item. And there's no requirements. You don't. You could be just a, a, a bedroom entrepreneur, which is what I started out selling my stuff in. You can just start selling just one or two products. You can just sell just to the UK. There's no requ minimum requirement to start selling on Wish. Mm -hmm. Great. And then you also talked about uh, SKUs. Number of SKUs is very important. Um, if you were a new brand, for example, wanting to come to Wish, is it about uploading as many SKUs as you can as quick as possible? Or is there like a strategy of adding in on a time, on a per weekly basis to continue to increase it for those algorithms to work best for you? Yeah, um, yeah, I keep saying it, good question as well. So what I would advise is, I, I, look, I think this is quite common. I know a lot of uh, marketplace sellers, it's time's the hardest part and having that time to upload the products. And what we find is a lot of sellers add like just a couple of products at first just to test things, um, which isn't the best idea, best plan from our point of view in terms of our algorithm. If you add your full catalog or as many products as you can upfront, then it's the best way to get picked up by our algorithm straight away because we'll know then that we're taking your, your products a lot more serious as well. Um, so yeah, I, the, my advice is to add your full cost catalog as soon as possible. Um, and again, we'll make we can help make sure that that's been uploaded correctly. If you wanted to add one or two products and then drop us a message to say has this come through correctly, we can confirm that everything's okay and then upload. You can upload the rest of your products straight away. Great. So when sending products to the warehouses using fulfillment by Wish. Uh, can we send items in bulk, e.g. multiple products sent to the warehouse in one box, or do they have to be individually pre-packed in postal bags? Um, yes, yeah, you can say when you send it to Fulfillment by Wish, um, if you are an Amazon FBA seller, it's a very similar sort of setup. So you, you send that, you send the products ahead with the products um, packaged and labeled uh, with their unique barcodes on, which we provide you with as well. So very similar to like the way um, the Amazon setup would work is very similar to how Wish works. We can help do that for you on your behalf as well. Like if you need us to like tag those uh, products for you and like label them for you. Um, but I can follow up that with a bit more detailed guide about FBW afterwards as well for anyone who is, is interested in that. Mm -hmm. And is there somewhere that uh, on Wish that you can go and get that type of information? And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, once you um, uh, once you create an account on Wish, which takes seconds, um, we can share a link afterwards for everyone to create an account just to get the benefits I mentioned. But mm -hmm. within there, there's dedicated sections. So there's a section about FBW, and it will give you an FAQ about it, all detailed information. There's video guides as well to explain things. Um, but then again, we've got account managers to jump on a call with you and take you through that step-by-step -step process as well. Mm -hmm. And, and how do you get access to that account manager? So, you know, so if you want to go and sell today, you sign up an account and yeah, I guess, how do you get that first contact into that account manager? Yeah, absolutely. So the, my advice is to, um, we're, we have a booth here today and our UK account managers are on those booths today, um, is to contact them. Those will be the ones who would then onboard you and be your account managers. Uh, if you can't sign up right now, um, I would just advise just to take, uh, you've got my email address, uh, which is on this deck, which we can make available to anyone. Just drop me an email address and I'll make sure you get your account manager in which country you're in to help support you and onboard you. So uh, yeah, if you signed up organic, I'll also share a link that if you sign up through, we'll be able to make sure that you get picked up on and get you an account manager as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, there's been, again, a lot of questions about plugins um, and systems that you're linked to. So different different systems um, that, uh, you know, like Linworks, for example, and Volo and others out there, and you know, are they connected into Wish? Um, is there a page where some, where people can go and look at that type of information, or is that something an account manager can help with, or actually is it talking to the platforms themselves? 
Yeah, so um, on the deck I just had just then, which you can download from our our, our booth as well, um, there's a slide on there um, of, uh, which has all of the integrations we currently have live now and the ones that will go live. Um, so if, if it's if it's listed on there, you can you, you can use it straight away. Um, there are they're the ones which we work with directly. Um, there might be others which have already built their own integration without working directly with Wish. So the best advice I have is to check that slide, um, and then if you have any other questions, just drop us a message. Um, and if there's an integration that you that we don't have at the moment, we're very keen to expand rapidly in Europe. So we're adding integrations uh, on a monthly basis almost. So we, we would want to add more integrations as well. So there's one that we don't have listed. We'd love to hear about it. Fantastic. And what about educational programs? So obviously there's great support for the account manager, uh, account management team. Um, and there's two questions around that. One is, you know, at what level do you have to have to get and what access do you get to an account manager? So if you're a, someone who's selling 50 products versus someone selling you know, thousands upon products, um, what's the difference in that level of support? And then secondly, is the education programs in place to, to support the new sellers? Yeah, yeah. So the way it works is obviously um, we have two different levels. We have our European general support, which is what um, you would have your localized support. If you're maybe just a smaller seller who um, uh, doesn't need as much attention every single day or every week, then you'd go into you would have you'd be in our EU general support where you'll just be like um, you'd, there'll be a team of like account managers who will just look after you. You wouldn't have a dedicated one, but they'll just look after you and support you with particular questions you have. Um, if you're a bigger seller who um, is wanting to add more products or sales brands or sales internationally, then you would have your own dedicated experienced account manager who will then um, help guide you through that entire process to really unlock the true potential. Um, but the, in terms of the guidance, in terms of the support, you, we have webinars like uh, across our country, each country we're doing webinars, to, uh, different sections each time. So and we, are those videos are always made available online. So you can find out about how to use Product Boost or how to use Wish Express. Um, and we also have um, a very detailed FAQ guide, which has built in videos as well to take you through each process. So we have a very strong educational piece, but we are expanding that out. Uh, we've recently just brought on a, a, a new hire who's who's a uh, Pure Focus is going to be helped to like do this as well. Like very experienced, who's done this at other marketplaces, and she's going to help build out a bit more of that sort of like that sort of like educational uh, part, like Wish University, if you would. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, great. And this is really a topical question, I guess, and yeah, kind of relating back to Wish Express, with many parcels getting stuck at customs and taking longer than two weeks to arrive in Germany. Do the wish customers expect fast delivery get frustrated with delays as much as customers like who might do on Amazon or as well? Yeah, I think um, the strength of wishes is the fact that customers are willing to wait because they're traditionally used to like placing an order for a Chinese product and it arrive in two to three weeks later. So um, yeah, it, it's they are willing to wait, um, and if they don't. They know, there's not like an Amazon where they expect it the next day. Um, of, even if it's in Wish Express. Um, we have a tool called, um, uh, we have a, a communication tool. So a merchant can communicate with the, the customer just to let them know that your order is on the way. Uh, um, and if the customer has any issues, they can ask like, hey, where's my order? Then you as a merchant, if you want, can respond to that and say, yeah, it's just been held up. But generally our customers are patient because they're used to waiting anyway. They just want like, they're just happy to wait for that product. Um, and then the other question you asked about, uh, was the second part of the question? Sorry, I went blank. That was on the previous question, I think. I think you answered that one already. So this okay. is about getting stuck and, and getting the, the, the stuff across. Um, oh yeah, so yeah, the other thing, the, the, that was the point I wanted to make, sorry. So again, yeah. we're very different as well to um, uh, other marketplaces where they really want you to put free, free shipping as a, mm -hmm. as, a, as a prerequisite. On Wish, our customers are used to paying for shipping. Um, so my advice again is to, um, lower your product price because that's what they see in the feed and then have a shipping price so you don't need to bake your shipping price into the actual listing price i would separate the two out um i don't it's kind of linked to logistics but it's just another tip for customers for merchants yeah that's quite interesting because it's very it's almost the opposite of a lot of the other marketplaces isn't it it, it is it is but again our customers are used to it um and it makes your product stand out so much more uh, as well because that's what they see on the feed they see that initial price straight away yeah, fantastic. Cool. And what about drop shippers? Are you, are you okay to drop ship through uh, through Wish? So you can you can drop ship through Wish. Um, if you are a European seller and that product's come and being drop shipped from within 
Europe, let's say you like use Big Buy or one of the other wholesale dropshippers in Europe, then um, yeah, uh, you can still have an account manager to help grow your account in Europe, uh, within Europe. If you wanted to dropship from China, you can still definitely create an account and sell on Wish, but you wouldn't get a European account manager, um, just as a heads up. Uh, our European account managers are here to grow European supply. Um, so um, yeah, dropshipping, if your product comes within Europe, um, you can sell both. So you can sell dropshipping, yes, definitely. But if you want an account manager in Europe, you need to, your product needs to be coming from within Europe. Okay, so yeah, so, so really account management resources based on where the product's coming from, not where the Correct. seller is necessarily located. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, and um, another question came through was that through the slides with the different categories, um, I noticed that sports category was not mentioned. Is this a category you're trying to expand future or in the near future, or actually do you actually just call it something else? Yeah, so yeah, we would call it something else. So let me just quickly get, uh, yeah, sports would fall under, uh, one second. Um, I have pulled under our toys and hobbies um, and also our, our out hope. So our home and garden and outdoor living as well, it would fall under as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, sport is definitely like a big area that we, like, we've got a lot of like sports apparel brands selling on Wish, um, but sports products, um, absolutely. We've actually got a big campaign we're doing about outdoor outdoor living and outdoor activities coming up soon. So yeah, it's a it's a definitely a big category for us as well. Yeah, fantastic. And is there a, is there a plan to actually single out sports separately as a, as a category? Or you know, do you think kind of the audience that um, you're appealing to would just see that as an outdoor? And I, I, I guess it goes back to your point around the fact that you know, sales, a lot of sales happen on which aren't through search, right? So mm -hmm. people aren't searching that. So actually those products are being shown because of um, what they're looking for and types of things. So is having the right category within Wish on your products not as important as, say, on an eBay or an Amazon where actually it's search is probably a, an important part of that. It, 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 yeah, so um, one thing actually, when you add a product on Wish, you don't actually select your categories. We don't actually have categories within Wish. We categorize the products for the merchant on their behalf. So when they yeah. upload a product, we'll create a parent category like a consumer electronics, and then we'll go down to laptops, and then we'll go down to like iPad. So we'll go down to three levels and every single product on Wish gets categorized by our own content team. Um, so my advice would be like, yeah, um, we would, uh, the, there is a plan to be able to like expose that more, the categories potentially, but um, my, my advice is to use our tag functionality. So if you ask about in, selling sports brands is to attach that in the tag. So it could be like tennis, tennis racket, et cetera. Then we'll use that as part of like our algorithm to match those products to the customers who we know have a hobby or interest of tennis or outdoor. They've searched for that or they search for products similar to that. So definitely yeah, optimizing your data and your listings on Wish, you've really got to look at that from a Wish perspective, don't you, and the customer journey that you guys go through um, and yeah. spending the time to get that that right to be successful. Yeah, but a lot of the, a lot of the heavy lifting is done by us. So mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff is done on the back end for us as part of our algorithm. Like mm -hmm. To get started to list your product, you really only have to add a few basic pieces of information um, and then Wish will do the rest of it. But obviously the more information you add, the better because um, mm -hmm. it means we have more information to play with and, and more information to match products to customers with as well. Yeah, and then to be able to, and what are the things that sellers can do to actually boost their own stuff? So you guys do some awesome stuff and mm -hmm. a lot of really cool stuff to help the sellers, but how does it, yeah, apart from getting, having great data on there and, and, you know, and putting as much information as they can, what can they do to boost the sales on there? What are the, what are the tools that the actual seller has to play with? Yeah, so within the actual merchant dashboard, uh, they'll be able to do their own price drop. So um, they'll be able mm -hmm. to like change those prices. They can build, they can use product boost. Um, they can use Wish Express and they can use collections. All of those I would strongly advise using. Uh, using those, like it, you're more, you're going to get picked up more by the algorithm. You're going to have more chance to get more impressions, which obviously will then lead to more sales. So those tools are all built in. We've got guides on those, but again, happy to help answer any questions about each one of those in more detail. Fantastic. I mean, it sounds like there's been a lot of interest on this on, on these sessions. I mean, the questions just keep pouring in and we probably can't get to them all. You know, so one last question um, and then we'll kind of wrap up the session is, you know, what's the average order value uh, on, on Wish? Um, so uh, I actually can't um, share that out because we're a publicly traded company now. Uh, there's only certain data that I've been given that I'm able to share. So 
Um, I can't share that. I can say the average order value for our European sellers is much higher than what it is obviously for the Chinese sellers. So if you're worried that your product's too expensive, we have products that range from um, uh, um, iPhones, um, laptops, um, barbecues, all sorts of huge products worth hundreds, uh, if not thousands, to very small products as well. So um, our customers just focus on as long as it's good value. They're just looking for, they're just value conscious. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have something that's cheap as in like only a couple pounds. It's just as long as they know that they can go to Wish to get like the cheapest barbecue or the cheapest, like, like it could be like last year's like apparel, like outlet store sort of stuff. Fantastic. So I think we're out of time. That was a really awesome and really interesting session to, to really understand more about Wish and the opportunities that are there. And it definitely shows with, you know, with the audience engagement and also the questions that are coming through. So, you know, there's, I'm sure everybody has a lot more questions they want to go and ask. So please take the time to visit the supply showcases. You've got to meet with the fellow attendees in the networking hub as well. Um, you know, and the team from Alan are there to answer more questions about WISH as well. So please utilize that. You know, we're, we're currently at the end of the session. The sessions will recommence at uh, 1.30. Um, the afternoon or the host for this afternoon will be Chris Dawson. So he'll be back on to, to, um, to, to lead this afternoon session. So in the meantime, you know, go and have a look at the coffee tables, go and sit and ask questions, browse attendees, network, look at the showcases and really enjoy it. So Alan, thank you so much for being with us today and for sharing and uh, look forward to uh, speaking with you again soon. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, everyone.